just, just, yeah. The zombies will come out. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, completing the square, let's identify the vertex. And actually, you know, let's, uh, yeah, let's, yeah, let's keep it like this. But remember, guys, when we're, when we're factoring, when we're completing the square, we've got to create a binomial square. So we've got to create something that is, um, we've got to have a perfect square trinomial. I can't create a perfect square trinomial with this one half there. And even if it was a four, I probably would still just want to factor it out anyways, because it would be much easier just to create the perfect square trinomial when my x is equal to 1, even though 4 could work. You could factor with that. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 1 half. Factoring out a 1 half is just like dividing out a 1 half. It's really the same thing. So basically, I'm taking 1 half x squared plus 3x, and I'm dividing each of these by 1 half. That is the same thing as factoring out. But sometimes I throw in fractions, and people are like, this is the hardest problem in the world. But it's really the same thing. What's 1 half divided by 1 half? Good, 1. So we're just left with an x, right, or x squared. Then what is 3 divided by 1 half? I don't know. Let's multiply by the reciprocal. A equals 6x. Okay, so it's not, it's not like crazy. Now, you could, multi you could factor the 1 half out of everything, but in my opinion, that just makes everything more confusing. And again, our goal of this is not to like solve where we have to do something to everything. Our goal here is to, um, our goal is to create a perfect square trinomial. And again, guys, I didn't change this problem. These two are equivalent. Equivalent. Like you multiply one half times these two terms, and you're good to go, right? I mean, so I didn't change that. I just changed the format. But now we have this. Now what we inside the parentheses we want to create a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to take my b divided by 2 and square. Remember, b comes from the standard form. However, we don't want to use this b. We want to use the b once it's been factored out. So therefore, it's going to be 6 divided by 2 squared, which equals 9. So therefore, we are going to take that 9, and we're going to add it inside of our parentheses. Why add it inside our parentheses? Because that 9 has now created a perfect square trinomial. Remember, all perfect square trinomials can be factored to binomial squared. But since we're adding that here, we have to subtract that. And if we're going to subtract it, oh, I really didn't add a 9 here. I added a 9 that's multiplied by 1 half. So here, I have to subtract a 9 multiplied by 1 half. And then don't forget about the subtract 2 at the end. So again, yes? Why didn't you factor out 1 half of negative 2 uh, at the beginning? I did not. I only factored the 1 half out of these two terms. Because if you're factoring out the 1 half, then you've got to change like how your parentheses are. And then you'd have to multiply that 1 half back through again. So if you just focus on here, because the main important thing I want you to focus on is creating a perfect square trinomial. We don't need this number to create a perfect square trinomial. So let, let's just focus on these two terms and create a perfect square trinomial. Then we'll worry about the 2 at the end. But we don't need that to do this. So let's just, that's why I just focus on that at the time. Um, because it's. This is easy. It doesn't matter how complicated it is. It's, this is a perfect square trinomial, so the binomial squared is this term squared, or the square root of this term, square root of that term. And then same sign, x plus 3 squared. And again, check your work. Is x plus 3 times x plus 3 give you that? Yeah, it's good. Now, in this problem, we do have some fraction operations. But hopefully, you guys have learned that you took back some things from me and said, oh, OK. So again, let's just rewrite this with the same denominators. Guys, let's not make this crazy math. Just rewrite 2 as negative 4 over 2. Right? Just replace 2 as negative 4 over 2. Now they have the same denominators. So you combine the numerators. You owe me $9. You borrow 4 more dollars. You now owe me $13 over 2. So that will be our final answer. So y equals 1 half times x plus 3 squared minus 13 over 2. So therefore, our vertex is, remember, the opposite. So it's h, um, hk. And then does my parabola open up, or does it open down? It opens up. So therefore, this is a minimum. It's an absolute minimum, by the way. It's bounded below. Um, I, well, I'm not talking about the axis, but the axis symmetry is x equals negative 3, which is a vertical line going right down the middle. But that's about it. Does anybody have any questions further on this? 
you do have completing the square. So following the process is going to be important. There is one that has some fractions, and there's one that has some factoring out. So it's a good question.